Kia ora mai tātou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, uh, tēnā koutou, ngā mihi ki a koutou katoa. Hands up uh, all those who understood what I said. Wonderful. You know, um, about 10 years ago when I started doing stuff like this, people just used to talk over top of you. One of the interesting things we have in this uh, stunning country that we live in is that all of the visitors who come here, um, they engage with Māori and Māori culture and they go overseas and they describe Māori as warm, friendly and engaging people, which we are. Now, Pania couldn't make it today. Sadly, her, um, her daughter has gone into hospital with looks like viral pneumonia. And so when I arrived here late yesterday afternoon, quite a few people told me I was delivering the talk today. And then she rang me this morning and said, you're delivering the talk today. Um, said, yeah, I travel with presentations, sort of Steel Martin, Sneed and stuff, and some of Tourism New Zealand stuff and glue it together, which is what I did at lunchtime today. So if you see some of your stuff up there, we're Māori, we're just, you know, used to taking everybody's stuff. I mean, it was ours in the first place, let's face it. And so um, I, I was really interested in, in listening to a discussion about a group of people trying to work out whether the environment's important. No, so give it back. <laughs> it's not worth anything. Give it back. It's interesting, uh, uh, Vance made a great statement that um, perception is sometimes a greater motivator than reality. We live in a country where there is a perception and a reality. Our visitors see Māori as warm, friendly and engaging. Most Kiwis see Māori as mad, bad or sad. Now, we know two of those are wrong. We're generally happy and we're not that bad. And it's a bit of a shame, really, that quite often Kiwis go overseas and discover their nationhood. And so today, what I wanted to share with you, just some information um, about uh, Māori in the economy, about Māori in New Zealand and the work that's been done. I don't have a clicker here, so my attractive assistant, I'll just get you to flick the first slide if you would. Thank you. So I'm not going to read through them, but I just want you to have a look at some of the information that's... I'll just shift this so I can see it. Some of the information that's there. Oh, certainly. Promise not to break it. Now, there is a test uh, at the end on this information. In, uh, in 2010, um, a, a survey was done to actually estimate the value of what they call the Māori economy. And that was those Māori businesses, Māori in business and Māori enterprise. And surprisingly, it was valued at around $37 billion. Uh, today, it's estimated at some $40 billion. When that information came out, everybody naturally thought Māori land claims. But as you can see, so far of all the claims that have gone through court, uh, all of the grief and the pain that every community throughout the country has suffered, about a billion bucks has been paid out. So when you actually have a look at most of the growth of the Māori economy or Māori enterprise, it hasn't actually come from land claims. It's come from Māori being in business. Can we go to the next slide, if you would? Oh, I've got my clicker. Thanks. Um, nearly $10.6 billion of the Māori asset base is predominantly in the primary sector. And that in itself creates an interesting paradigm for Māori. Now that we've finally got a lot of our stuff back, we've gone into farming. Oh, OK. And, and now that we've got a lot of our forests back because we took doctor court, now we're the second largest conservator in the country. So we're having to go and ask Doc um, to form a new relationship. We're having to realise this concept of kaitiakitanga or guardianship. We are, as a people, becoming one of those polluters. Māori are now getting into um, to tourism. I need to put my glasses on so I can see the slide. Māori are now uh, openly engaged in tourism, as you know. What does tourism mean? Well, for us, I guess... Um, we frame tourism up in a Māori sense. Uh, for us, we believe that Māori culture is the unique point of difference to visitors here in New Zealand. And Māori culture is something that we share with all Kiwis. I like to say, I'm the iwi part of Kiwi. Pretty much, that's how I view us as a nation. It's my desire and my hope that kia ora is recognised as the country's national greeting, because we just say it anyway. If you go to the Collins or Oxford Dictionary, kia ora is now listed in there, because the English have stolen more stuff than the Māori's ever did. <laughs> Let's face it. People say to me, oh, I don't really like using foreign languages. I said, oh, so you've never had a smorgasbord before, or driven down a cul-de-sac. So once again, what we see is that negative imprinting that many Pākehā New Zealanders have against Māori without realising it. And so when you look at the information and you look at the facts, you have a peoples that were colonised, so we suffer those problems that other colonies have had. I spoke to the New Zealand Chambers of Commerce um, a couple of weeks ago, 
and at the end of my enthralling and entertaining talk, which they always are, the only question I got answered was, asked was, how's Tai Nui doing? You know, they did lose some money. Was it about $28, billion or $28 million? I said, I don't know. I think they're worth a billion now, and they've forgotten that. By the way, did you have any money in that $1.8 billion finance scam that happened to the country? Uh, I think, wasn't Air New Zealand bailed out? Didn't the BNZ get broke? So for some reason, people still have an imprinted memory of when Māori failed. Most of the major countries and kingdoms in Europe have been broke three or four times. Thank God for the Catholic Church bailing them out all of those times. Just took the odd daughter here and there to sort it out. Pretty much that's how I view us as a nation. It's my desire and my hope that Kia ora is recognised as the country's national greeting, because we just say it anyway. If you go to the Collins or Oxford Dictionary, Kia ora is now listed in there, because the English have stolen more stuff than the Māori's ever did. <laughs> Let's face it. People say to me, oh, I don't really like using foreign languages. I said, oh, so you've never had a smorgasbord before, or driven down a cul-de-sac. So once again, what we see is that negative imprinting that many Pākehā New Zealanders have against Māori without realising it. And so when you look at the information and you look at the facts, you have a peoples that were colonised, so we suffer those problems that other colonies have had. I spoke to the New Zealand Chambers of Commerce um, a couple of weeks ago, and at the end of my enthralling and entertaining talk, which they always are, the only question I got answered was, asked was, how's Tai Nui doing? You know, they did lose some money. Was it about $28 billion or $28 million? I said, I don't know. I think they're worth a billion now, and they've forgotten that. By the way, did you have any money in that $1.8 billion finance scam that happened to the country? Uh, I think, wasn't Air New Zealand bailed out? Didn't the BNZ get broke? So for some reason, people still have an imprinted memory of when Māori failed. Most of the major countries and kingdoms in Europe have been broke three or four times. Thank God for the Catholic Church bailing them out all of those times. Just took the odd daughter here and there to sort it out. And so, once again, it's interesting when you have a look at how we're imprinted. These are not views or opinions that our visitors get. So, Māori tourism, the range of businesses. Well, let's have a look at what the Māori tourism sector looks like. You have micro-businesses, very much like yours. The small to medium, the, uh, I love it, the zero to, to six employee. Mum and dad working for the business, pretty much for nothing, uh, paying for the kids to go to uni, so they work for free when they come home during the holidays. So that looks like any business. So Māori tourism businesses are very similar to tourism businesses. Most Māori businesses are, are small to medium, so they've gone from micro to small. Then you've got the large and successfully owned uh, tourism businesses, uh, Whale Watch Kaikoura. You've then got, obviously, when you look at the large corporations, Tainui uh, have their relationship with the Accor Group, uh, built the, uh, involved with the hotel in uh, Airport Hotel um, in Auckland. And also looking to put $60 million aside for yet another project. Not bad for an organisation that lost about $24 million and 10 years later worth nearly a billion. Uh, that, in terms of financial management in this country, is unheard of, yet not reported. Many of you probably didn't even know that until I said it. Because Māori are mad, bad and sad. And we love it when people think that, because quiet achievement is sometimes the best way to creep forward. When you have a look at uh, Naitahu and the, the great work that they have done in the South Island, Wakatū uh, Incorporation at the top of the south where I come from, and Tohu Wine. Many people say it's hard to get Tohu Wine in New Zealand because Kiwis only want to pay nine bucks for it. So we sell it to the Poms for 19. Why wouldn't you? And they turn the label around because they want to read the story written on the back. Most Kiwis still drive past a marae, but when they're overseas at two o'clock in the morning when they're pissed, they do the haka, because they're a Kiwi. I'd rather you didn't, actually. <laughs> Not drunk. And so there's some aspects of our culture that actually belong to all Kiwis. Let's have a look at some of those businesses. You know, I, I've met these delegates that are here today, Tupuia, Whakarewarewa, Tamaki Māori Village, those iconic Māori businesses that really put Māori tourism on the map in central Rotorua, but also uh, mountain bike Rotorua. It's a new Māori business, a couple of young Māori guys who are really dominating that adventure market. You've got footprints in Waipoa, whale watch, as I mentioned, dive tatapodi. So what we're now seeing is a range of diverse Māori tourism businesses. Normal businesses, but they do business in a Māori way. They offer a Māori perspective. Uh, Aroha Healing, based in Auckland. It's a, a healing and massage business that work within the tourism industry and hotels. And they offer Hawaiian, traditional Māori massage and Reiki. So what we're now seeing is Māori moving through that wider 
um, network, uh, the wider sectors within tourism. What do we do, New Zealand Māori Tourism? I guess we're the smallest of the, the, the tourism agencies. We beg, borrow and steal and it seems to work. Very fortunate, last year we worked alongside Tourism New Zealand and Channel 10 in Australia. They wanted to make a programme about Māori tourism guides, big organisations and, and new ones about why Māori, what, what drove Māori tour guides. So it was very much the story behind the businesses, the story behind the industry. So we partnered with Tourism New Zealand and we took um, Channel 10 through the country. So we visited Tupuia, uh, Whakarewa, we went, uh, Whakarewa Village, we went down to uh, Kaikoura, met with Whale Watch, Morris, Manawatu and Māori Tours that we went to the top of the south, different regions where Māori tourism was growing or where Māori tourism had been successful for 180 years. You look at Rotorua, it's where tourism began in this country. Not just Māori tourism, but tourism. The second location was in the Lower South Island, the Māori guides taking uh, visitors across the glaciers down there. So Māori have been involved in tourism for a long time. Māori have been hosting people for a long time. Uh, Brazilian social media, about three months ago, we worked with a group called the Jovem Nerds. They have 12 million hits a month on their website. They have their own uh, Google TV channel and they're just about to sign a deal with Google to go global. Um, when they arrived, they took a photo of themselves at Auckland Airport and apologised. It was 4.30 in the morning by 6am that only had 120,000 hits. They said it was the time difference. That tour for us was a mixture of, of what we call New Zealand. We are great supporters of the brand, 100% pure New Zealand. It's the best brand in the world. Everything we do, we sell that brand because I believe we need to get the tourists here and let's fight over them once they're here. And so that tour across the country was a mixture of Māori and mainstream. So they went to Waitomo Caves, they went to Hobbiton, and then to hosted by Tipuia. And they visited English language schools in the morning. They went to the Wairu uh, Army Museum. Uh, we organised them to meet with uh, the team at Weta. And so the crew at Weta gave them some props that they took and as they went down through New Zealand had mock battle scenes which they put. They had a radio show that they put together. It's had one million listens so far. They were contracted for three programmes, they made five. They absolutely loved New Zealand. They reminded me, in actual fact, what a great country we actually live in and why 100% pure New Zealand is absolutely true. For the essence of their experience, they believed it was 110%. Russian TV, we've just finished working with them. Um, My Planet TV, they're called, fourth largest um, viewed channel in Europe, and they came to New Zealand. Um, they wanted to see Matariki. They wanted to visit Māori villages, where when we see each other, we immediately break out into the haka. I had to sort of tell them that New Zealand was probably the most urbanised country in the world. And so we took them throughout to, to Auckland to some Matariki events and then down to Wellington to Te Papa. They visited with Matatini uh, and, and we organised uh, for them to watch a rehearsal of Te Wakahuya, this year's National Kapahaka winners. And straight after that we took them to a rehearsal with Jay Geeks to actually show that our culture can be contemporary or traditional. For them uh, the, 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 the one hour programme looks to be two hour programmes that will air later in September. I'll send you all couple copies if you speak Russian. So for us... What we're selling is what New Zealand has to offer, New Zealand Aotearoa, and the people who actually live in it. I'm a realist, we have some great mountains here, but the Swiss have better ones. The Yanks have bigger lakes. What they don't have is all of that in three small islands uh, with, with a culture that is unique to this country, Māori culture. It's a culture that we share with all of you, whether you are Māori or not. And admittedly, there are some aspects of our culture that are special to us. As to you, there are aspects of who you are that are private to you, with your religion, with your culture, or with your creed. But it's about collaboration. So, that's the brand. That's the brand that yet again has created headlines. I spent 30 years in the media, and I learnt one thing. I don't give a shit what you say about me, as long as you spell my name right. And once again, our brand has come. Finally, the competition believe there's a bit of a chink in our armour. Because whether we like it or not, they believe this is a 100% pure New Zealand. They believe we need to be responsible for it. So we can either argue the point or we can turn around and work with our brothers and sisters in the primary industry and say, let's get it right. And once again, go back to the brand. Because when you think about the brand we have, I had a bit of a look around the world and let's go, as we always do, to our closest neighbour, Australia. That's there. Where the bloody hell are you? And the guy with the camels is saying, I have no idea. <laughs> now, they're changing their brand all the time because it doesn't stick, because it doesn't have cut through. And any marketer will tell you, a brand with cut through is the brand to have. And our brand, our New Zealand brand, actually does. I believe after the 
Mm, weekend. After the performance by the Wallabies, they should change it probably to this. <laughs> Robbie, Robbie, where the bloody hell are you? Because they're a bit lost. For me, I, I, I think we're lucky. So, and don't panic. Don't worry about Fonterra. Today's National Business Review. Dairy prices are back up to where they were. They're okay. So you'll now see it fade away. What are the repercussions? What are the impacts for tourism? It's a bit like somebody dropped a pebble in a pond. We're actually over here. That wave is yet to hit. So I think we need to be responsible. Within Māori tourism, I guess, to give you an indication, here's what we believe. Here's our kaupapa. Māori leading Aotearoa New Zealand's visitor experience. We'll stand up. Just need some of your money to do it, but we'll stand up and lead the way. Māori tourism, for us, we believe should be the first impression and the final exclamation mark. Let's let them know where they were. All of those things in the middle, all of the Kiwis they meet, whatever the experience. If our landscapes provide the U factor, we believe that a Māori experience can provide the R factor, because you'll not get it anywhere else in the world except maybe the Gold Coast of Australia. <laughs> a concept that, that we always believe in terms of trying to explain this monarchy, because monarchy is one of those words that's just too big to explain. In a commercial sense, for me, it's about understanding that your visitors arrive as strangers and they leave as your family. Then you have done a great thing. Then you are running a great tourism business. Then they will go out and promote not your business, but you. Relationship. People to people, culture to culture. And as you always do, sorry, I need to point that. This must be flat, mate, is it? No. Oh, need to have photos, as you always do. That's one of those iconic pictures. It's a Wairaki um, Terraces, an iconic picture of the hongi. And the hongi is special to Māori. It's not a kiss. It's not rubbing noses. It's the joining of the third eye and, and the pressing of the nose to share that breath of life. And we believe that's one of those things that, once again, is Māori but should and could be Kiwi, something that you need to think about. Should, you, should we do it now? Should you hongi the person next to you? I see people go, change, hell. Trust me, I'm not a Māori tourism missionary. I'm not trying to convert you all to be Māori. We've got Tim at Tapuia. It's a start. We've got one. We've got one. Morris Manu, this is Morris Manua too from Māori Tours Kaikoura. I've put Morris's photo in because he's currently in Chile at the moment um, doing some work for us, working with the Mapuche people there. And his wife, Heather's here. So I just thought I'd show you your boy, there he is. I had no idea who the woman is, Heather. I... <laughs> Just on retrospect, with him over there and you here, that probably wasn't a good choice of photo. So, um, right, let's go to a nice big New Zealand landscape with a happy tourist and a guide. Whew. So once again, this is 100% pure New Zealand. These are people from overseas saying, we just don't get this anywhere else in the world. You know, I heard a wonderful story the other day about how an advertising agency was thinking about a community campaign and, oh, Jim Bolger would be great at that. So they looked up in the phone book and they rang and Joan Bolger answered, well, Jim's not in at the moment. Would you like a cell phone number? That's New Zealand. That's where we live. That's who we are. That's actually what we have to sell. And, well, it must be me, eh? And I put whale watch in there because I'm sitting next to Kawahi up the back and he's my cousin, so I thought... I <laughs> He's bigger than me and younger than me and better looking than me and makes more money, so he's buying the beer tonight, so I just thought I'd put them in. So I guess what I'm saying is 100% um, pure New Zealand. Now, I'm certainly not my place to do the marketing for Tourism New Zealand, but I want to support them here today, and I've got a solution. Now, I've got to show you this photo. Wakatu Incorporation, I mentioned. For us, these are the images of who we are as a people, New Zealanders. The man is my great uncle, Uncle Mugwi. And that is his uh, great-grandson. And they're in uh, one of the Tohu vineyards in, uh, in Marlborough. And he is, we snapped that photo at a family function where he was bending down on one knee, telling that young boy about when he was a kid, there were no grapes and we never had that land. We had to fight to get it back. And now there's a vineyard on it growing grapes and now people work on it. So he's sharing that story to the next generation. And for us, as Kiwis, as Māori, I believe that's who we are as a people. It's what makes New Zealand special. The sharing of our stories and our connection to our family. So, that's the only change I'd make. <laughs> Absolutely 100% sure we need to stick with that because it's a really great brand. And I congratulate those who created it and those who have the spine and stomach to defend it, all of you, and carry on. Uh, Nō reira. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou.